Hello there world. My name is Selma Edgar and hello. I'm Selma Edgar, married to Norman Edgar. We are Protestant Christian missionaries. We live in St. Charles, Missouri in the United States. I am 68 years old and Norman is 70. And this this is where we live, right in the center of the United States. We also have a website, <coughs> howtobecomeachristiantoday.com. That's all one word. This is my husband's name, Norman Etker. You can Google that or go to our website if you'd like more information about our ministry. Um, Norman's biography, our testimonies. Many articles about the Bible, about Jesus. So, again, this is me. My title has questions. So, if you would like to ask any questions, um, Norman and I have been married now for three years, and you are welcome to ask questions about my life as the wife of a Christian missionary, our questions about the Bible, about Jesus. My husband Norman is on every morning. This is his title, O900 Prayer Request. As you can see, hello there. My husband's been a Protestant Christian missionary for 40 years, and we come on Periscope to tell the world about Jesus and the way of salvation. Hello, welcome. So, again, I'm going to be talking about Jesus, and I welcome any questions or comments. Hello there. For those who've just signed on, this is me, Mrs. Selma Edker. I'm in the United States. And... What's on my heart to start with this morning, talking about Jesus, my husband and I were just reading in the Bible, hello, welcome, about when Jesus was crucified. Now, of course, I have no idea uh, about those of you out there who are watching this morning. I don't know if you have any knowledge about the Bible. I don't know what your religion you might be involved in or none at all. But for those of you who maybe don't know anything at all about the Protestant Christian Bible, and that, by the way, is the only Bible that we believe in. It is the only divinely inspired word of God for all mankind. And it tells about Jesus being the only way of salvation. When Jesus was brought to trial, hello, Jesus was brought to trial and condemned to death. It says that the soldiers that took him, they put a purple robe on him and purple being the symbol of royalty. Hello there, welcome. This is me. I'm Mrs. Selma Etker, Protestant Christian missionary, and talking about Jesus and about his crucifixion. It says the soldiers made a crown of thorns and put on his head. Can you imagine having a crown of thorns pressed onto your head? And not only that, then it says they took a reed and beat him on the head with that crown of thorns. Those thorns pressing into his head. And then it says they spit on him. And they kneeled down and mockingly worshipped him. Just think what Jesus endured, what humiliation and physical agony 
Jesus endured. And do you know why he did that? He did it for you, and he did it for me, for every person that has ever lived and will ever be born. Jesus suffered all of that. Hello there, welcome. This is me, a Mrs. Selma Etker, a Protestant Christian missionary in the United States. And I'm talking about Jesus this morning, about his, his death and what he suffered. And he did that. He didn't have to do it, but Jesus chose to do that for me and you and every person. Hello, welcome. Jesus became the atonement for the sins of all mankind. God required a blood sacrifice to pay the penalty for our sins. Jesus was a God-man. And that's the only reason why he could do what he did. A, a mere human could not have done that. For one thing, it took a perfect, sinless sacrifice. And no mere human mortal is perfect and sinless, but only Jesus. He willingly went to the cross to die for the sins of all mankind. He took the wrath of God upon him so that we do not have to suffer the penalty for our sins. Hello, welcome. This is me. Mrs. Selma Etker, Protestant Christian missionary in the United States. Jesus, Jesus loved the world so much. That's why he suffered all that humiliation, all that physical agony. It was also emotional suffering, being separated from God the Father. But the Bible says, the Protestant Christian Bible says, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God does not want anyone to perish, the Bible says, but he wants everyone to come to repentance that they might be saved. So, It is not a, it is not something that people should take lightly. It is literally a matter of life and death. Whether you choose to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you choose to reject Jesus. That is the only reason that people go to hell is because they reject Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. I was also thinking about, and this is along, I'm really not changing the subject here, but just coming at it from a different angle. The other morning when my husband Norman was on Periscope, he said that the friends we have on Periscope will go to hell unless they are spiritually born again. And I was thinking about that, and, you know, we are, even though we are Protestant Christian missionaries and we love Jesus, with all our hearts, we're still just humans, just like you are. We, 
enjoy having friends. We like seeing familiar faces come on Periscope to chat with us, and we have a few that are really supporting us. And, um, and of course, that makes us feel good. But the thing is, if we come on here and we only say nice things so that everybody would like us, what good is that? Anybody can do that. We would be failing our mission, our responsibility to God, if we do not tell you how you can avoid going, going to hell. That is the whole purpose of a Protestant Christian missionary, is to tell people that Jesus is the only way of salvation and tell you how you can be spiritually born again. The reason we want to do this, it's not that God forces us to, but when a person is spiritually born again, the Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. Therefore, we have the love of God in our hearts for all people. So, as God does not want people to go to hell, neither do we. It's a very grievous thing to know that so many people are going to go to hell because they reject Jesus. Hello there, welcome. If any of you have just signed on in the last few minutes, this is me. Thank you for those hearts. So, I am saying that love, the love of God, that is true love. And that, that kind of love does not want people to go to hell. That's why we spend our time on Periscope. It's for your sake. For those of you who are listening, and our hope and desire is that some will have ears to hear the truth and take it to heart. So, to love God is to obey His commands. And He said, it says in the book, the book of Second John in the Protestant Christian Bible. Oh, hi, Karen. Thank you very, very much. I'm always happy to see you come on, too. It is an encouragement. There are many, many, many false preachers and teachers in the churches today who are only telling the people what they want to hear so that they will keep coming back to their church so that they can keep raking in a lot of money. There's a verse in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament that talks about tickling the ears of the people. That means the preachers, the false apostles, they say what they know the people will want to hear to make them feel good so that they will keep coming back and supporting them. There's a scripture in the book of Galatians, and this applies in two it applies in one way to Norman and I, it applies in a different way to all of these false preachers and teachers, and it says, Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Hi, Miguel. Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. 
So, Norman and I are not trying to please people. It would be pointless. We want to please God. We are servants of God. Good morning. We are servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we are here on Periscope. We are not here to win your approval. That's what these false preachers and teachers are doing. That is only those preachers like Joel Osteen who are always preaching a happy message. He actually begins his sermons with a joke every single time. He tells the people a joke to get them laughing, to get them in a good mood. And then he tells them how God is going to prosper them and everything is going to be hunky-dory. He will not, he refuses to tell people about hell. He will not talk about sin. That is not love. Because those people who are following him will end up in hell. And people who are following all other preachers that are just like him, they will go to hell unless one day they repent and turn to Jesus and accept him as their personal Lord and Savior. That, those kind of messages are counterfeit. The devil is a liar, a deceiver, a counterfeiter. The definition of counterfeit, and I shared this once before, Counterfeit is made in imitation of something genuine so as to deceive or defraud. And the second definition is something that so closely resembles something else as to mislead. That's what these false preachers are. They're preaching counterfeit messages. It's packaged to look almost like the real thing. So people who don't know the Bible and who are not truly seeking God, they don't know the difference. They think they're hearing a message from God. They think that they're hearing what the Bible says because they're not reading it for themselves. They are hearing what they want to hear. And these messages are misleading them. It's all lies of the devil. It's counterfeit. It's a counterfeit gospel. No matter how it's packaged, these preachers will use some scriptures and then make it to say what they want it to say that they know the people will like. And they're just leading the people to hell. Those kind of preachers and teachers, the Bible says, will suffer a greater damnation in hell before what they are doing. So, I have a question for you out there. I don't know if anyone wants to answer. I don't really expect you to, but something to think about at least. The question is, do you ever think of yourself as a sinner? Have you, has that thought ever crossed your mind? I know that for me, it didn't before I was spiritually born again. In fact, I clearly remember when I first started reading the Bible several years ago, it says in the book of Romans chapter 3 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
And I was shocked when I read that. <laughs> I didn't know God, and I thought, wow, how can, how can I say that? I thought I was a good person. And that's, I'm sure, probably 99% of people would think the same thing. If you have, in fact, I remember then asking a lady one time something about heaven and hell, and I, I don't remember exactly what I asked her. And she thought about it real seriously, and finally she said, well, I haven't killed anyone. So she thought that made her a good person and she would probably go to heaven because of that. So, it is a serious matter. Here is the scripture from Romans chapter 3. All have sinned. and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. The bad news is that we are all born sinners. The reason for that is the original sin committed by Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They first disobeyed God. God had given them only one command, and they decided finally to disobey God. And that was the first sin, the original sin. And because of that, everyone that's been born since then is born with a sin nature that was passed on to every person. That is the reason why we need a Savior. Because we are all sinners at birth. And Jesus said you must be spiritually born again. Because of that sin nature. Jesus took that punishment for us. Jesus says in the book of John chapter 9. Verse 5, he says, I am the light of the world. So what does that mean? How is he a light? And why does the world need light? This is referring to spiritual light. Hello there, welcome. Spiritual light and spiritual darkness. The world sits in darkness, the Bible says, and the darkness is referring to sin. Sin is darkness, it's evil. And Satan is the source of all evil. Satan was created by God. He was a beautiful angel. And... He got lifted up in pride because of his beauty. And he decided he wanted to be worshipped as God. So he tried to dethrone God. He convinced a lot of the other angels to rebel against God with him. And so, because of that rebellion, they were kicked out of heaven. And so now Satan is busy all over the world deceiving people because Satan knows his eternal destiny is hell and he wants to take everybody to hell with him. So Satan deceives people. Satan is the devil. He is a liar. He's a deceiver. He's a murderer. He is the source of everything that is bad and wicked in this world. So the world is, sits in darkness. Uh, no. It is, well, and 
in a sense, yes, it's a religion because a religion is not faith in Jesus Christ. The Mormons is a false religion. They actually believe that they came from aliens. Um, since you ask, I have something written down here, if I can find it real quick, about their beliefs. Let's see. Hold on just a second. They believe that the people on earth, yes, yes, I am a missionary. This is me, Mrs. Selma Edgar. I'm in the United States. Thank you for asking. The Mormons have a very false religion. And let's see. Here we go. Okay. The Mormons believe there's three sacred books in addition to the Bible. They say that the Father, Father God, begat that he had a goddess wife in heaven and all humans then came from God and his supposed wife and they come to earth and have the potential to become gods and that uh, salvation has to be earned by works and they, so they, they believe they are aliens that they came from another planet I mean it's just a goofy religion so no there's nothing legitimate about it thank you for the question so Mormonism is like Hindus, Buddhist, uh, like the Muslims, like religious Protestants of all kinds, like all false religions, they will only lead you to hell. There's nothing in any of the, there's 4,000, it says on the internet, about 4,000 religions in the world. And all of them will only lead you to hell. It's only by faith in Jesus Christ that a person can be spiritually born again and have eternal life in heaven. So all of these false religions are darkness in the world. All sin is darkness. Jesus is the light. He came to rescue people from sin, from the darkness in the world. As Protestant Christian missionaries, the Bible, the Bible says Jesus told his followers, go teach and make disciples. And he said, I am the light of the world. And he said, then after I go back to heaven to be with my father, then you, speaking to his followers, and then he said, you will be lights in the world. And therefore, I have here on my desk some special items that remind me of our mission, Norman and I's mission. And I have a picture here of a lighthouse. You can see that. A lighthouse, there's many of them around the world, I'm sure you all know, and the purpose of the lighthouse is to send out a beam of light for the ships to be able to see where there's danger in the waters. And you can see here's this in this picture, how the water's turning up and the, the sky is dark like a storm is coming and the light of the lighthouse is to warn them. That's what Norman and I are doing. We are here as lights 
to tell the people about Jesus, who is the light of the world, to warn you of the danger of hell. Hello there, welcome. This is me, Mrs. Selma Edgar, Protestant Christian missionary in the United States. And I have something else. I've shown this a couple of times, but I don't know who's out there listening today, so I'll show it again in case you have not seen it. This is my little lighthouse that I got at a, at a thrift store, and I just think it's pretty neat. And you can see up here the little light flashing. And you can hear the hear the seagulls and the waves crashing. So I appreciate all of your questions, all your comments. Do I think aliens exist? No, I don't. Uh, the Bible says that God created the world and everything in it. God created the people. And uh, to me, aliens would be something that's uh, not of God. So, I, I don't believe that. I think a lot of people just enjoy that because it's something weird and they can't understand it. And so it's just uh, some kind of fascination for some people. Kids, yes. Um, I have two sons and Norman has seven children. Of course, they're all grown up. I'm 68 years old, and Norman is 70. So, um, Macintosh, have you... Yes. Have you been on here before? I don't remember. Uh, okay, Macintosh. Great. Well, I really appreciate you coming on and chatting with me. And uh, may I ask where you are? Are you in the United States? Okay. Um, let's see. We have a website, Macintosh. Here's our website, how to become a Christian today.com. Okay, you're in Kansas City. Okay. Um, this is our website, and you can also just Google Norman Etker. That's my husband's name. This is all one word, how to become a Christian today.com. You're welcome. I really appreciate your interest. Um, also, if you wanted to contact Norman, his email address is normanetker at hotmail.com. Here's his name again. Our name is O-E-T-K-E-R, Norman Etker at hotmail.com. So, uh, uh, are you talking about, um, like a preacher, Miguel? Is that what you're asking? Oh, thank you, Javier. Thank you, Macintosh. Okay, uh, a preacher would be like um, in the Catholic Church, the priest who gives a message.
Is that what you're talking about, Miguel? Um, if you're talking about a spiritual leader, um, are you talking about some a person who talks about God? Uh, okay, yes, a spiritual leader. Okay. Um, the only one that I can honestly say, Miguel, is my husband. He is a great man of God, and I have great respect for him. And um, I uh, no, no. Um, so far as I know, Nelson Mandela is not spiritually born again. Thank you so much. Um, I don't look up to anyone. This is not a, this is not to put people down. Uh, I'm not saying all people are bad or anything like that, but I don't look up to any kind of leaders who are not spiritually born again, because they don't, <clears throat> They don't mean anything to me, except that I care about them in the sense that I want them to be born again. Oh, thank you. What a beautiful thing to say. It is um, is truly a gift from God, the marriage between Norman and I. Um, I was single for 15 years before I met Norman and he was alone for about 12 years and I had I had told God no Miguel unfortunately he is not um I had told God okay well thank you for that information Macintosh appreciate it um, God has a plan for you, for your life. And if you turn to God and live for him and you want his will to be done, then that will be the best thing for you. How do you know when it's right? Well, for Norman and I, it was... Um, yes, yes, I believe so. Um, I had told God before I met Norman, I said, God, if I don't know if I'll ever be married again, but if you have a husband for me, I want him to be a man who loves you more than anything else in the world. And so, like I say, I waited I didn't even have a desire for many years to ever be married again. But then God brought Norman into my life. And he is truly a man who loves God more than anything else in the world. But he loves me with a great, passionate love. And I have the same love for him. And we just know in our hearts that it's from God. That's right. That's right. Always put God first and he'll lead the way. Miguel, um, I cannot say that about my sons. Sadly, um, one of my sons um, said, well, they both would say that they are Christians but I do not believe they are spiritually born again because they do not show it by their lives. And of course, that's, that's very grievous for me, but they have to choose their own way. So, you know, just because 
yes. Um, and you know, Macintosh, yesterday someone asked Norman that very same question, how many times a day did he pray? And it's like he said, it's when you are spiritually born again, it's not that you have to go and spend a set amount of time in prayer each day. It's not a it's not a ritual that you do. But God is always in your heart and in your mind when you're spiritually born again. God is just a part of you. And yes, yeah, certainly I pray but not at set times. Um, but people who are just religionist. Yes, that's right, Miguel. That's right. You don't, praying, um, praying a prayer that somebody else has written down is meaningless. Okay, that's a good question. When, uh, I'm not sure what you've heard so far, Macintosh, but it's about being reconciled to God. And when a person is serious about seeking God, God's grace is there for you. God's grace is his love and his favor and his power. His mercy, he's reaching out to you right now. And he's calling out to you, turn to me. I love you. God's grace will help you to understand about Jesus. And you have to turn, the Bible says, like a child. Just simple faith. No, no, you certainly don't. Jesus died on the cross for the sins of all mankind. He took the penalty for our sins. He suffered the wrath of God on that cross. And his blood that was shed on the cross is the atonement for our sins. When you believe that just by faith, with God's God's grace helping you to understand. And you turn to God and you say, God, I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. And you turn to God and say, I'm sorry. God and Jesus, yes. God is a spiritual substance, a trinity. It's God the Father. God the Son, who is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. God is a spiritual substance consisting of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's not three gods. It's one God. Jesus is the one that died on the cross for us. And by faith in Jesus, you can turn to God and say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. And um, those are okay. Um, So when you turn to God with a sincere heart and you say, I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, and that includes repenting, which is that you decide, yes, yes, several times. And you decide that you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. That means that you surrender your heart you surrender your life to God. You agree that you want to obey the teachings of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. And when you do that, okay, 
when you do that, that's right. That's right. I appreciate your honesty. I really do. So it's important now what you need to do is to begin reading the New Testament. The Old Testament, it, the whole Protestant Christian Bible is the divine inspired word of God for all of us, for all people. But the Old Testament is a history. It tells about the creation of the world and about the, the history of mankind up until Jesus came. It's important to know that, but when you're spiritually born again, the only part of the Bible, good, good, the only part of the Bible that we live by as Christians is the New Testament. That's the teachings of Jesus and his apostles. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. It's the teachings of Jesus and his apostles and the evangelists who were with him. And that is what we are to obey and live by as followers of Jesus. So when you, now that you've heard that, you have to make a decision if you really want to know God and be spiritually born again, or if you're just going to forget about it and walk away. So, I hope that you will begin reading your New Testament and talk to God. If you really want to know God, tell him so. Tell God to help you understand. His grace is there for you. He will reveal himself to you. And when you become spiritually born again, then the Holy Spirit of God transforms your heart. And you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And you can read about that in the New Testament of your Bible. Those words are in there. Everything that I'm telling you is in there. Either way, whatever, whatever is comfortable for you. It doesn't matter to God if you talk out loud or just in your mind. He will hear you. He loves you with all his being. And he wants you to be in heaven with him when you die. And so do I. Everyone who rejects Jesus as their Lord and Savior will go to hell. And that is a place of eternal torment. That is your choice. That is what you need to do to be spiritually born again, yes. And to keep from going to hell. And in the book of Revelations in the New Testament tells all about heaven and hell. And it tells who will go to heaven and who will go to hell. God gives us all free will. How do you know if you're going to hell? You go to hell if you never make that decision to turn to Jesus. No, it's not by anything that you do in your life. Oh, that's great, Miguel. The only thing that will send you to hell, <laughs> that is definitely a sin. Most people don't take it very seriously, but it does say in the Protestant Christian Bible that liars will go to hell. But everyone who is becomes spiritually born again will no longer be a liar because you change when you're spiritually born again. 
That's the reason Jesus died for us. When we're born again, he sets us free from the sin nature that causes us to sin. That's the whole reason Jesus came. So when we're born again, we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. We are no longer sinners. Sinners go to hell because they've not been spiritually born again. It's not because of the sins they've committed. Yes. Yes, when you are born again, you have a, a joy that God gives you. You have peace in your heart with God. No, it is never too late. As long as you are breathing on this earth, it is never too late to be spiritually born again. That's the wonderful thing about God. He is so merciful. It doesn't matter how old we are, how many sins we've committed, or how terrible the sins were. If we sincerely repent, if we sincerely repent, and turn to God and surrender our lives to him, he will forgive us. Well, that in itself does not make you born again just reading the Bible. No. That in itself will not save you. But what I'm saying is, you read the New Testament Um, no, uh, not, uh, we have not, uh, Miguel, uh, but there are some that he keeps in touch with on Facebook and, um, email. Um, being spiritually born again is by talking to God in reading the New Testament, Macintosh you will see in there the things that I have told you. In reading the New Testament, you will see what Jesus says, that you must be born again, that you must repent. All of Jesus' teachings are in there. That's why it's so important to read it. And you will see that what I'm saying is true. It's not that you have to believe everything I'm saying. Thank you. Don't take don't take what I'm saying and just go with it. Read the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament and you will see it for yourself. That's the words of God for you. And then talk to God. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that comment. The, the New Testament, the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament is God's own words. All the people that wrote that, they were disciples and evangelists of Jesus. Those are God's words. He inspired those men to write all of that New Testament. Great. So that's God's word to you and to everyone who will read it. So begin reading and talk to God if you're sincere and wanting to be born again. He will reveal himself to you. Tell him if you want to be born again. Tell him you want to be forgiven, that you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Tell him if you will serve him, that you will live your life for him in obedience to the New Testament. It's between you and God. So, it would be, that is the most important decision that you will ever make. It's the most important decision for every person in the world. 
to make because it's a dis it's the it's your eternal destiny either heaven or hell wonderful thank you so much macintosh for listening and um uh, my prayer is that you will too become a follower of jesus and enjoy the benefits and the blessings of being a spiritually born again Christian. Know Okay. Uh, not sure if that's just between you and Miguel chatting. I don't know if that was a question for me or not. But my friends it is time for me to go for the day and oh okay all right you're very welcome and I hope that you will be back um, today's Sunday I'm on Sunday mornings and Tuesday and Wednesday mornings at 11 o'clock so um, this is it for today. I'm trying to find my, where'd my little stylus go so that I can log off. I seem to have lost it. Okay, my friends, I will see you next time. I love you all. Thank you. Bye-bye for now. Well, we'll get off of here. Okay. Thank you for the hearts.